Hi, welcome back to another video. Today it's time for the AMD X3D CPUs. Unfortunately, I don't have an official sample. Thanks again, AMD Germany. And we got a CPU though, like not officially, but we will be able to at least delete the CPU because right now it's Sunday, so I don't have the time to do any kind of review or anything, but it should still be, I think, interesting to check if there is any kind of mechanical difference inside. My expectation is that we will not find any kind of differences because you could already see some kind of render images prior to launch that kind of showed that there is a, like a CCD without the 3D cache and that has still the same height as before and then you have the second CCD that contains the 3D cache and that one was kind of recessed so should overall be the same uh, height for both dice. But to ensure that deleting tools and also direct die is compatible, we obviously have to test this ourselves and that's what we are going to do in today's video. Here we have our 7950X 3D which we're going to delete using the delete die made for Ryzen 7000. Orientation wise, just align the triangle to the triangle. The slider only goes in, in one direction. And then add the screws on top. Starting to tighten the first screw to pull the slider towards this direction. On the last rotation, I could kind of hear and also feel the glue that was getting unstuck. And now we just have to repeat exactly this. Plenty of times until the IHS comes fully loose. But it's becoming easier and easier each pull. That's why we are changing to speed tech mode. At a certain point, um, it's getting a little bit softer, so you can start pulling this by hand. Then you know that it's almost good to go. First look and also first investigation looks pretty good. We don't see any kind of mechanical damage, at least all the surrounding components are in a pretty good condition. So nothing was damaged. Also looking at the dies themselves, they all look pretty good, like no chipped edges or anything. And just if you look at this from this current state without removing the indium solder, this could also just be a 7950X. Looking at the IHS, we can see the same kind of not existing differences. So it's the same as the 7950X from the first look. I will measure the height in a second to see if there's any kind of like thickness difference in the IHS. But from what I can see right now, I think it's exactly the same. A normal Ryzen 7000 CPU has an IHS height of about 3.4 to 3.42 millimeters. That's what I measured so far on different CPUs. And if we check this one, it's 3.41, so that's exactly within what I measured prior to this one. So yeah, there we have it, no height difference. We will now start to remove the indium solder with a sharp razor blade, which is a good method, but it can also be dangerous. But I just want to scrape it off and see if we can spot any kind of like physical differences between the dies and see where the 3D cache is located. Quick disclaimer, I know that I'm moving the blades towards my direction, which is something like from a safety standpoint of view you should not do, but I just have the best control this way. And what I absolutely want to avoid is cutting into a part of the CPU, like chip and edge, cut into the PCB, damage it permanently. Pretty much done with the entire cleaning process, scraped off all the remaining glue. Also tried to remove as much as possible of the indium solder. And now I think I will just go ahead and apply a bit of liquid metal because this should help to etch away yeah, most of the remaining indium. So we can maybe spot some kind of difference because right now 
it all looks completely the same like a 7950X. Obviously this amount of liquid metal is like way too much for a normal application. You should never see any kind of like lakes building up as you can see here. Uh, would be much more in this direction right here. Even this would be too much. But for removing it from the surface, this should be good. We just removed the indium part of the IO dye area and I now want to figure out the indium sheet thickness. Obviously, it's not going to be fully accurate because moving back and forth with the deliter is also impacting the height of the sheet, but measured in this state, we have about 0.3 millimeters, which is as expected, I would say. Typically from CPUs in the past, I could usually measure between 0.3 and 0.4. And that's also why the temperature will be better using liquid metal, even though li liquid metal will perform worse than indium. But if you decrease from 0.3 to maybe 0.03 overall thickness of the tim layer, then it will just perform better with liquid metal. You can probably spot some like tiny black areas, especially on the IO die, but also on the right side of this uh, chiplet right here. And that's a good indicator that we successfully removed some part of the surface. And I will now start to remove this with this tiny tip. Now investigating it further, you cannot really see any difference. It just looks like any other 7950X. You cannot spot like which of these chiplets would contain additional cache or anything. It's pretty interesting. I expected that you would see maybe some lines similar to these render images, but nothing. So much about this quick video about the X3D CPUs, at least physically there is no difference, like all the dimensions, everything is exactly the same as a normal 7950X. That means that direct dye, any kind of coolers, deleters, anything is going to be fully compatible. That's the only thing I can tell you right now. For any additional testing review, you will have to look to our colleagues who hopefully received some samples. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.